Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Mr. Ian Teaches English. Uh, today, we're doing something um, just for fun. I thought that I would go live because I wanted to, and that's it. So, um, I do apologize to my lighting professional, if you're watching. Um, I didn't put the lights up because I didn't want to. Not today. <laughs> I just really wanted to go live uh, with this. So, I do apologize if you don't like the lighting. It's my fault. It's not the fault of my lighting professional. So, uh, we're going to jump in today and we're going to do a reading together because I always tell my students that it is really important to read. And so, we're going to read. And if you're here, uh, in the chat live, you can ask questions about what we read. And if you're watching this later, then, you know, you can ask your questions later. I do look at all of my comments. I do respond to all of them as I see them. If I lose a comment, uh, I'm sorry, I really try my best to look at all the comments and respond to them. So here we go. I chose today the story of Cinderella. Now, why did I choose Cinderella? It's pretty easy. Because Cinderella is public domain, which means I don't have to worry about copyright. <laughs> this uh, story belongs to the public, it belongs to the world, and so I don't have to worry about uh, Disney or anyone else being angry with me about my decision today. Now, my, uh, I am, I'm still a little bit sick. You can probably hear it in my voice that I'm still, uh, I've still got a little something going on, but I do hope that it doesn't affect us too much, and uh, we'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. All right, let me uh, make sure that everything looks good here, and then we'll go over. Um, so you see the story of Cinderella? Very famous story about a young girl and um, before I practiced for this live stream, I'd never read the story of Cinderella before. Saw the movie, but never actually read it. So here we go. Let's jump into it and the story of Cinderella. Now, as I read, I'm going to put the paragraph that I'm currently on at the very top so you can follow along. And if you do have questions, uh, please put them in the chat. I will be checking the chat occasionally, although I'm still learning this new platform. So if I miss your, if I miss your chats, then forgive me. But here we go, the story of Cinderella. There was once a rich man whose wife died, leaving him with one little girl. After some years, hoping to give his child a mother's love and care, he married again, this time a widow with two grown-up daughters. But his second wife was haughty and proud, and her two daughters were even worse than their mother. And the poor little girl had a very unhappy time with her new relations. Her stepsisters were jealous of her, for she was very beautiful, and they themselves were plain and ugly. They did all they could to make her miserable, and, at length, through their wicked spite and envy, her life became a burden to her. The poor child was sent to live in a kitchen, where she had to do all the rough and dirty work. And because she was always dressed in rags and sat beside the cinders in the grate, they called her Cinderella. It happened that the king of the country had an only son. He was very anxious that the prince should be married, so he gave a great ball and invited all the grand ladies in the country to come to it. And it was to be a very splendid affair, lasting for three nights and people were very eager to be invited to it, for it was known that the prince would choose his bride from among the ladies present. Cinderella's sisters received invitations, and from the day they arrived, they talked of nothing but what they should wear, for each of them secretly hoped that she would be chosen as the prince's bride. When the great day came at last, they began to dress for the ball directly after breakfast. Cinderella had to help them, and they kept her busy all day doing their hair and running messages and helping them to lace up their fine dresses. 
When Cinderella saw their beautiful clothes, she wished that she could go to the ball as well. But when she timidly asked if she might, they laughed in mocking scorn. You go to the ball, they cried. What would you do at the ball with your rags and tatters and your dirty face? No, no, Cinderella. Go back to your seat amongst the ashes. That is the place for a little kitchen girl like you. And I add completely on my own, yikes. Imagine living with these young ladies. No, thank you. So the two sisters and their mother drove away in a carriage and pair to the king's palace, and Cinderella was behind them. She sat down on the hearth before the kitchen fire and began to cry softly to herself, because she was so very lonely and miserable. All right, we'll take a quick break there. If you have any questions, we'll put it in the chat. Please let me know. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll jump right back in here. All right, lonely miserable. As she sat there in the dusk, with the firelight dancing over her, and her face buried in her hands, she heard a voice calling, Cinderella, Cinderella. And with a start, she looked up to see who it could be. There on the hearth in front of her stood an old woman, leaning upon a stick. She was dressed in a long rag cloak, and she wore high-heeled shoes and a tall black hat. Where she had come from, Cinderella could not imagine. She certainly had not come in through the door, nor yet through the window, for both were shut. Cinderella was so surprised to see her that she stopped crying and stared at her in astonishment. Why are you crying for? asked the old woman. Because my mother and sisters have gone to the ball, and I am left here all alone, said Cinderella. Do you want to go to the ball too? said the old lady. Yes, but it's no good. I have nothing to wear but rags, sobbed poor Cinderella. Well, well, be a good child and don't cry anymore, said the old woman briskly. I am your fairy godmother, and if you do what I tell you, perhaps you shall go after all. Run into the garden and bring me a pumpkin. Cinderella ran into the garden and brought in the biggest pumpkin that she could find. Now go and fetch the mouse trap out of the cellar, said her godmother, and Cinderella hurried to get it. There were six mice in the trap, gross, <laughs> and the old woman harnessed them to the pumpkin, put a rat on the top to drive them, and two lizards behind, and then waved her wand over them. Immediately, the pumpkin turned into a gorgeous coach, the mice into six beautiful horses, the rat into a stately coachman, and the lizards into tall footmen with powdered hair and silk stockings. There, said the old woman, there's a carriage to take you to the ball. I'll let you look at the picture. Alas, said Cinderella, how can I go to the ball? I have nothing to wear but this. And she touched her ragged frock. Is that all, said the fairy godmother. Once more she waved her wand. And Cinderella's rags turned into the most beautiful dress in the world, all shining with gold and silver threads and covered with costly gems. In her hair, there was a circlet of pearls, and her feet were shod with the prettiest and daintiest pair of glass slippers that ever were seen. Now, said the fairy godmother, now you can go to the ball. But mind you, come away before the clock strikes twelve. For, should you linger beyond that hour, all of your splendor will vanish, and your dress will turn into rags again. Which is probably a pretty good rule for life, right? My dad used to say, he who leaves the party early leaves with no regrets. So, you do what you want, but I think it's a pretty good idea. Cinderella obeyed, sorry, Cinderella promised to obey her godmother's instructions. Then she got into the beautiful coach, the footman shut the door, and the coachman whipped up the horses, and away she went to the ball. When she arrived there, sorry, when she arrived, there was a great stir in the palace. 
So lovely a face and so costly a rich dress had never been seen before. And everybody thought it must be some great princess arrived from foreign lands. All the courtiers and other guests stood back to let them pass. And when the prince caught sight of her, he fell in love with her on the spot. He danced with her the whole of the evening, and people thought there was no doubt as to whom he would choose for his bride. Uh, at a quarter to twelve, Cinderella, remembering her godmother's instructions, said goodbye to the prince and came away. She arrived home just as the clock struck twelve. At once the coachman and footman turned back into rats and mice, and the coach into a pumpkin, and when the sisters came home a little later, there was Cinderella, dressed in her shabby old frock, sitting in her usual place among the cinders. The two ugly sisters were full of the strange princess who had come to the ball. They talked about her all the next day, little dreaming that all the while the beautiful lady was their despised sister, Cinderella. In the evening, after they had gone to the ball, the fairy godmother made her appearance. Once more, Cinderella drove to the palace in her coach, and six, this time arrayed in a still more gorgeous and beautiful dress. And once more, the prince danced with her all the evening. But when the third night came, Cinderella was enjoying herself so much that she quite forgot what her fairy godmother had said, until suddenly she heard the clock begin to strike twelve. She remembered that as soon as it finished striking, all her fine clothes would turn to rags again. And jumping up in alarm, she ran out of the room. The prince ran after her, trying to overtake her, and Cinderella, in her fright, ran so fast that she left one of her little glass slippers behind on the floor. The prince stopped to pick it up, and this gave Cinderella time to escape, but she was only just in time. Just as she was crossing the palace yard, the clock finished striking, and immediately all of her finery vanished, and there she was, dressed in her old ragged frock again. When the prince came out upon the palace steps, he could see no sign of the lovely princess. The guards at the gate told him that nobody at all had passed that way except a little ragged kitchen maid, and the prince had to go back to the ball with only a little glass slipper to remind him of the beautiful lady with whom he was so desperately in love. The next day, the king sent out all his heralds and trumpeters with a proclamation, saying that the prince would marry the lady whose foot the, fit the slipper fitted. But though all the ladies in the land tried the slipper on, it would fit none of them. Their feet were all too big. At last, the heralds came to the house where Cinderella lived. The oldest stepsister tried the slipper on first, but it was quite impossible for her to get her foot into. Excuse me. Uh, for her great toe was too big. Then her mother, who was watching eagerly, fetched a carving knife. That's not what you want. Be quick. Cut the toe off, she said. What does it matter if you are lame, if you are the prince's bride? You will always ride in a carriage. I, got, I gotta disagree here. That's not a good move. So the eldest sister cut off her big toe, but it was of no use. The slipper would not fit, and at last she was obliged to hand it to her sister. But the other sister had no better luck. She did indeed get her toes inside, but her foot was much too long, and her heel stuck out behind. The mother urged her to cut it off. Well, there you go. <laughs> what does it matter, she said. If you are the prince's bride, you will never need to walk anymore. I'm not sure that's a good reason, but hey. But although she cut her heel off, the slipper was still too small. And at length, she, too, had to give up the attempt to force her foot into it. Then Cinderella came shyly out from behind the door where she'd been standing, out of sight, and asked if she might try this on the slipper. Her stepmother and sisters were very angry and were about to drive her away with blows, but the herald stopped them. The prince wishes every woman in the land to try on the slipper, he said, asking Cinderella to sit on a chair. He knelt down and tried the slipper on her foot, and it fitted exactly. 
While everyone stood and stared in astonishment, Cinderella drew from her pocket the other slipper and put it on. No sooner had she done so than her ragged frock changed into a beautiful ball dress again, and she stood up before them all, the beautiful lady with whom the prince had fallen in love with at the ball. The prince was overjoyed to find her again, and they were married at once, with much pomp amid great rejoicings. As for the wicked sisters, they were so jealous that they both turned green with envy. They grew uglier and uglier every day, until at last they were so dreadfully ugly that nobody could bear to look at them any longer. But Cinderella became more and more beautiful, and lived happily with the prince forever afterwards. What a nice little story. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. All right. Um, let me check and see, look at the chat here, see if anybody's trying to communicate. Uh, if you have questions about that, let me know. I do apologize for having to drink uh, so much water. I'm still not completely 100% and my mouth gets dry when I read. Um, let me see, I don't see anything in the chat. Uh, maybe that's true. Maybe that's just my software that I'm still learning how to use. Uh, so, let me see. I'll do a quick check here. Excuse me, looking off the screen. Um, I'll try to be better at this. And yeah, so it looks as if we're good. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope this was helpful. I really do. I tell my students all the time that reading is so important to language because when you read, you get to reinforce the ideas that you learn in class. So many of you are in an English class and that's great, um, but you need to reinforce those things. You need to see those things again and recognize them again. And reading is wonderful for that because when you read, you read at your speed. TV goes at the TV speed and there's nothing you can do about that. You can pause it, but it's not natural. It feels weird. However, reading, you can go slow. You can see the things that your teacher talked about in class. Take your time identifying them. So if you're not reading a book, I recommend that you do. Of course, you can always come and hang out here with me as I read. If you like this, if you like reading these stories, there are tons more that we can do. And I would love if you join me while we're talking, if you are live with me, you can always ask questions about what's in the paragraph, the vocabulary, the structures. Um, I would love to be able to help you with that. So until next time, I'll see you. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, start reading. <laughs>